Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. It's hard to believe, but it's almost a year now since the introduction of the RTX 20 series of cards from NVIDIA. That's right, the RTX 2080, for example, launched back in September. But we've been hearing many rumours of a super series for the RTX 20 graphics cards. And after AMD heard their E3 2019 event where we, where we learned excuse me, many more details of the RX 5700 and 5700 XT and that those cards would be competing against the uh, RTX 2060 and RTX 2070 respectively, it's not too much of a surprise that we're finally starting to see some movement from NVIDIA. So one of the things that we do know is that NVIDIA are considering a pretty hefty price cut for the RTX 20 series of cards. Obviously they want to maintain at least parity in terms of pricing from AMD, but that's not quite enough. Because if AMD's internal benchmarks are to be believed anyway, the RTX 2070 does get beaten by the RX 5700 XT. So what are they to do? Well. They go super, not Super Saiyan, obviously, although I'd actually pay a lot of money to see some gif of uh, Jensen Huang turn Super Saiyan on stage. Uh, but anyway, as I was saying, so when it comes to NVIDIA, no, we're not going to see the RTX 2085 or the 2075, because that would make sense. Instead, they're deciding to call these cards super, and they're bumping up the specifications of the GPU. So it would appear that we finally have a confirmed list of specifications for the 2060, 2070, and 2080 Super, and also the release window. The graphics cards will launch around mid-July, but they've only just started to speak to AIBs about these cards. So i actually spoken to a couple of AIBs myself, and so far they've not actually been able to give me that much insight. So probably NVIDIA are keeping this close to their chests and thus it's going to be a short while before we actually start to get any real leaks from AIBs. But the specifications, as I mentioned, have appeared. They originally popped up on a Chinese forum and since then several other sources including videocards.com have actually confirmed that these are right. Essentially they are basically the fully unlocked dies, but are slightly updated. We don't know whether this clock speed increases yet, unfortunately. But what we do know is that the core count, as well as the memory, has seen a bump. Okay, I know what you're gonna say. What type of bump are we looking at? Is it anything substantial? Is it super? Sorry, I couldn't resist. Well, the actual image that I've been using a couple of times now seems to basically confirm these specifications. So 2944 CUDA cores for the vanilla 2080, the super card has 3072 and obviously faster RAM, 16 GBPS. The 2070 super appears to have all of the 2560 shaders enabled and it also appears to use the same die as the RTX 2080, at least similar enough. It's basically a TU-104 die and obviously just has fewer CUDA cores enabled, 8 gigabytes of RAM and from what we understand thus far, 14 GBPS memory. As for the 2060 Super, it uses the same die as the 2070, so Yes, it would appear that WCCF Tech's um, insight actually was correct there, but rather than having 6 gigabytes of memory, we see this bumped up to uh, 8 gigabytes of memory, but with the same memory clock, so 14 GPPS. So, as for pricing, well, the pricing appears that the super cards will slide in where the original GPU uh, was. Uh, at price wise so for example the super is going to launch at 700 us dollars which is basically what the rtx 2080 was and then obviously the vanilla models of these cards will see a price reduction it's also very interesting because in the euro asia economic commission we also have a couple of 
uh, samples from NVIDIA that are being sent around the world. So most likely these are actually being sent to IIB so they can do some internal testing. So this is not exactly a refresh exactly. It's not like they've substantially changed the architecture or done anything really substantial. It's more a tweaking of what's already there. So this is certainly not the 7nm refresh that we'd hoped for and it would appear that 7nm from Nvidia is going to remain on track for next year and is going to be utilizing Samsung for its manufacturing partner. But what we do have from Nvidia is just enough to fend off AMD. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see what AMD does in response. Are we going to see a price drop for Radeon before it launches or shortly after it launches or are AMD going to remain steadfast in its its strategy and it's still interesting to me that we never saw a low-end skew in the Radeon lineup being announced we don't actually have anything to compete against let's say the GTX 16 series of cards from uh, from uh, from uh, Nvidia all we have at the moment is still Polaris and the 57 and the 570, uh, the 580 and so on. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in the market over the next year or so. 16 cores and 32 threads for the 3950X is very impressive. But for HGDT users, they have a question. When are the next generation Threadrippers going to make it onto store shelves? Well, this last minute piece of news comes to us from WCCF Tech. And apologies for audio only, but I've run out of battery power at the moment and I've already largely finished editing, so this is very last minute. According to their sources, they expect a 64 core, 128 thread, Threadripper part to launch in the early part of Q4. So that's this year, possibly slipping a little bit. There are several questions, though, that they don't know the answers to yet. The first of which is the pricing proposition for these parts. You can expect one of the 64 core CPUs to not cost anything less than maybe two to three thousand US dollars. Otherwise, yeah, it would just be AMD being way too generous. It would not make any sense. The other question is whether they're going to continue to keep the X99 naming scheme that they've been using up until now. So, for example, X399 is very similar to a lot of people's mind, in a lot of people's minds, to X299. So AMD are concerned that they have, like, this mixed branding message or maybe confusing the average consumer. So they're considering changing this naming scheme, although apparently they've not decided whether this is the case yet. There's also no confirmation regarding forward slash backwards compatibility. So whether you would be able to put a 3000 series processor in an existing motherboard and also questions like memory channels as well is a pretty obvious one for us to concern ourselves with. Another tantalizing detail according to WCCF Tech is that we will not be seeing uh, Fredripper really be introduced next year Another fascinating detail is, according to WCCF Tech, AMD have, quote, something else planned for CES next year, although they did not elaborate as to what that would be. So, the timeline looks like right now we're going to be seeing the CPUs on store shelves by late January uh, next year, at the very worst case scenario, but apparently the company are targeting the fourth quarter of this year. And we actually did see Threadripper Next Generation appear on AMD's roadmap, and then they subsequently removed it. So, of course, we were all wondering what's going to happen, but then both Robert Halleck and AMD, as well as Lisa Su, have confirmed that they are not done yet with HEDT processors. So, for those of you who do want more than 16 cores, 32 threads, well, you're probably in luck. The next couple of months are going to be very fascinating in the CPU space. Just yesterday I covered a leak for the 3950X processor, where honestly the result for it, at least if you want to trust Geekbench as a great indicator of all of the results, the CPU is just absolutely mind-blowing. Actually taking out 
uh, most of the HEDT lineup from Intel, let alone AMD themselves. So it's going to be really fascinating to see what Intel can do in the short term when Comet Lake does launch with its 10 cores, what they're going to do price-wise. Obviously, there's going to be most likely anyway quite a price difference between the 10 core uh, highest and SKU from Intel and the 750 bucks that they're asking for the 3950X. Personally, I don't think they can ask much more than around 500 US dollars for the six, sorry, for the 10 core uh, Comet Link part. But it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what happens in the market. Unfortunately, what we don't know at the moment from Intel's side is what the clock frequencies are going to be. Hopefully, we see all cores at the very least at 5 gigahertz, like the uh, like the uh, KS model from the company with the 9900K. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it. And actually, comment down below if you own a Switch, how do you primarily play your system? Personally, I'm around 80-ish percent with it docked, although if I'm on a plane, on a long train ride, or those type of scenarios, it is quite nice to just be able to take the system on the go but every time i do so i always am very aware of the battery life and yes there are ways around that fortunately a lot of planes you can of course plug it into usb but i would love a system which is uh extending the battery life let's say another 30 or 50 percent that would be really awesome but take care of yourselves bye for now